Hello folks and welcome back to another Rank and Mall video and today we're going to take on Diamond Head's discography and these guys were part of the new wave of British heavy metal and early on they were hailed as the next Led Zeppelin but then they went down a path that alienated a lot of their fanbase so their popularity kind of fizzled out and Diamond Head has been kept alive by their original guitarist Brian Tatler who has kept the band alive through various lineups. And Diamond Head got a bit of a revival during the late 90s when Metallica released a bunch of covers of their songs. So if you're a Diamond Head fan, then smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe because more Rank and Mole videos are coming up here on the channel soon. And now it's time to rank Diamond Head's discography from the worst to the best. So let's do this. The worst Diamond Head album is in my opinion All Will Be Revealed and around the year 2000 Brian Tatler decided to give Diamond Head another go so he and the original vocalist Sean Harris started up the band again and they found an all new lineup besides drummer Carl Wilcox that played on the latest record but due to creative differences Sean Harris was fired from the band before they were able to record anything new with him so the band then hired a new singer in Nick Tart, and this more or less new version of Diamond Head then recorded and released All Will Be Revealed in 2005. And I'm sorry to say this but this record is just ridiculously bad. It's more of a hard rock album than a heavy metal album and it sounds like something that you would hear at your local pub or something. Definitely not a band that were on the verge of making it big. And I saw them live a couple of months after this album came out and it felt like I was watching a cover band. I love Brian Tatler but the rest of the guys made it feel like a cover band to me. And they only played one song from this album when I saw them, Mine All Mine, a real stinker by the way. So I think that this album shouldn't even have been released because people were stoked to see Diamond Head coming back and then they delivered a stinker like this. And it was so bad that I stopped listening to their new stuff that they put out after this record dropped. So, next. In 7th place we have another absolute stinker and it's what's in your head. And this is the continuation of that weird hard rock sound of All Will Be Revealed. And I don't know if I listened to this album more than once when it came out since I kinda zoomed out on the band after All Will Be Revealed. But this is very generic stuff in my opinion, and yeah, you should just avoid this air of the band at all cost I think. There are no redeeming qualities to these albums at all, it was just a disgrace. So next. In 6th place we have their self titled album Diamond Head that came out in 2016. And this album was a bit of a surprise to me because I expected the band to be completely dead creatively since more or less everything that they put out in the last 20 years was terrible. Diamond had then switched vocalists from Nick Tart to Danish born Rasmus Andersen and the new guitarist in Andy Aberle also joined the band. It was surely a big improvement on those early 2000 records and Brian Tatler's guitar play is recognizable here so the essence of Diamond Head was restored to some sense. But the band sounds very different from how they used to sound back in the day, mainly due to the modern production of this album and the fact that the vocals on this album is very different from the classic era of the band. And I think that this sounds alright but as I said it's very different, so next. In 5th place we have the Coffin Train from 2019 and this is an alright hard rock slash heavy metal record. It doesn't sound that much like the Diamond Head that I fell in love with, but at least this is more metal sounding than some of the weak releases during the early 2000s. Is it just me or does their vocalist Rasmus Andersen sound a bit like Soundgarden's Chris Cornell here? I think there is a bit of that tone in his vocals. And I think it's cool to see that the band finally got their shit together and that they managed to put out better albums of late even if these new records hardly has anything to do with the band that once recorded Lightning to the Nations. So, next. In fourth place we have Death and Progress from 1993. 
and this was the last album to feature their original vocalist Sean Harris. And for me personally, I need both Sean Harris and Brian Tatler in the lineup, otherwise it's not the real Diamond Head to me. And uh, this was the band's comeback album since it was 10 years since their last release Canterbury. And uh, this is a continuation of that hard rock sound of Canterbury to some degree. And the most notable thing about this album is actually the guest appearances. Diamond had actually managed to get Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath to play the guitar on the track Starcrossed Lovers of the Night, and Megadeth Steve Mustaine to play on the track Truckin'. And Dave Mustaine is an old fan of the band, but I seriously question their judgement here, because this album is far from good, even though Truckin' is one of the better songs on the album. So, next. In third place we have Canterbury from 1983, and this album was criticized back when it came out, because the band went in a softer direction after their first two records, and there is a lot of cheesy and inspiring hard rock tunes on this album, but there are a few tracks worth checking out like Ishmael and The Kingmaker, but the best song on the album is To The Devil Is Due which has this kind of mysterious Black Sabbath vibe to it. This album was a bit weird though, it has this kind of folky feel to it, and as I mentioned earlier it's way softer than their previous albums. And I remember Lars Ulrich of Metallica, he was unhappy with this album in an interview. He thought that they sold out here, and it's definitely some truth to that, even if this album has its moments. So next. In second place we have Borrowed Time from 1982, and this was the follow up to the band's successful debut album Lightning to the Nations, and for some reason they decided to include two songs from that album on this record as well, so Am I Evil and Lightning to the Nations was re-recorded for this album, so there are only five new songs on Borrowed Time, and Call Me is one of those songs. And it sounds a bit like Contemporary Rainbow, it was definitely a song that they tried to win some mainstream attention with. And the title track Borrowed Time and In the Heat of the Night had a few cool riffs in them. But I think that the decision to include two songs from their debut album on their follow up was a bad decision. It was like it was over already and they wanted to look back on their successful debut. I mean, Iron Maiden wouldn't have re-recorded songs from their debut and put it on Killers. That wouldn't have made any sense at all, and I don't think it makes sense here either. So even if I hold this as their second best album, I still think it was a slight letdown from their debut. And the absolute best Diamond Head album is of course Lightning to the Nations from 1980. And this was one of those albums that made the new wave of British heavy metal the focus of the world really because this one is up there with the best albums by Saxon, Iron Maiden and Angel Witch in my opinion. Unfortunately, their career kind of fizzled out into nothing after it, but who cares, because this is what it's all about. I mean more or less every classic song that the band wrote are on this record. Lightning to the Nations, The Prince, Sucking My Love, Am I Evil, Sweet and Innocent, It's Electric and Helpless. Their debut album is more or less a greatest hits record, so for me, it's the only Diamond Head album that you really need. Sure you can grab Borrowed Time if you see it in the bargain bin, but Lightning to the Nations is a full on classic. And it came out pretty early as well, back in 1980. So it was a very important new wave British heavy metal album, even if the band was still an underground act at the time. And it would perhaps be a bit mean to call Diamond Head a one hit wonder, but it all kind of went downhill from here, even if they had some cool songs here and there throughout their discography. So let's have a look at my full rank of Diamond Head's albums then. And I bet that most of you who are watching this video would probably agree with me when I say that Lightning to the Nations is their best album by far. They even re-recorded the album recently, but I do prefer the original of course. For me Diamond Head was one of those bands that initially did incredibly well, but when the new wave of British heavy metal faded out, so did their career. And they've tried to get back on track, but in my opinion they have never been close to the glory days. 
Sure, the last two albums has been a step in the right direction for the band, but I think they need both Brian Tatler on guitar and their original vocalist Sean Harris in the band to be Diamond Head. Those albums after Sean Harris left just sound so different. So this discography was really easy for me to rank since I think there is such a span in the quality of their outputs. But now I'm curious to hear about your favorites. What's your thoughts on Canterbury that was seen as a sellout album? And uh, what do you guys think of their last two records? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And feel free to rank their full discography if you're familiar with it. And if you enjoyed this video, then smash that like button and subscribe with the bell notifications turned on. And if you want to support my work, then you can become a Patreon. Or you can always go and show some support by grabbing a shirt at the Ruthless Metal Store. And I'm on Discord, Facebook and Spotify as well, so check those links out down below. And uh, let me know whose discography I should take on in the next episode of Rank Em All. And uh, that's all folks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.